Hello everyone, I'm Jack Cronin. You're very welcome to the fifth episode of All Things Football. Joining me here live is Larna midfielder, Fud Sule. Fud, thanks for coming on. No problem, fella, anytime. Good stuff. How's things? Uh, things are not too bad, obviously. The situation that's going on um, with the coronavirus and having to stay indoors as much as possible uh, it's obviously affected our livelihoods and how we live um, and most importantly it's, a, it's affected like football and, and work and stuff like that so I'm just doing the same things everybody's doing just trying to keep as fit as possible and trying to stay on top of my work and yeah. um, trying to get into a routine every day of uh, eating at a certain time waking up at a certain time and training at a certain time just to keep your head right and just trying to keep as busy as possible with other things. Good stuff, yeah. Um, but I guess start anyway. Um, where did uh, football all begin for yourself? Uh, football begin began for me um, when I was nine years old, playing for the school team, and uh, a scout from Rack Hill Boys uh, came up to me after the school game and said he wanted me to sign for Akio Boys and I was like scared because I was only like nine and this man's after coming up to me asking me to come and play football for his team only God knew what he wanted me to do like do you get me <laughs> I was proper like, I just, so I just walked away and just went back to meet my other teammates and um, and um, about two days later the same man showed up at my door so he must have got my details from the school team manager and um, spoke to my dad uh, went straight down to JJB, got a pair of Patrick shin guards, <laughs> pair, pair of Umbro boots, never forget them boots, white and, white and blue Umbro boots, and I was training with Raku boys that Thursday. Um, did you think them Umbro boots made you faster, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they had the go-go stripes on them as well. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> oh. Uh, I did a... Uh, uh, had a very good season there, was playing up front, scored a lot of goals and then um, we played a, a team called Granada. We This was in the South Dublin District School Boys League and we played a team called okay. Granada and they had a girl playing on their team and she was unbelievable. That, that's how I, that's the only reason why that memory sticks in my head because okay, she, yeah. played, she was the only girl in the league like so, but she was class and then um, um, we played that team, I think I scored a hat-trick and then um, uh, Paul Hammond at Crumlin United um, uh, spoke to my dad and said he wanted me to come to Crumlin United and play and stuff like that. So I uh, went to Crumlin on trial, obviously made the trials, but for some reason Paul didn't realise that I was a year younger than what he thought I was and he he uh, signed me up with the 96 age group. And uh, this was with the likes of Dan Clary, Jake Mulraney, uh, Larry Clark, um, Aaron Rochford, uh, Lee Hammond. So, Serious um, team. Yeah, very, very, very good team. And then um, it was hard for me to break into to that team, as you can say, the, the quality of the players I've just named. So um, it was very hard for me to break into that team. But for some reason, the the, 90, the 97 age group manager, which was the under 10 manager at the time, mm -hmm. um, somehow, I don't know, spoke to Paul and found out that I was actually playing a year above myself. And then... So they came to an agreement and uh, Paul said that I'd be able to play for his team whenever I didn't get a game on the, for the under-11s. So the under-11s played on the Saturday and the under-10s played on the Sunday. So whenever I didn't play on the Saturday, I'd get a game time on the Sunday. Um, and then so played for the under more time, played for the under-10s. Uh, kind of felt like I was being demoted a bit because you know yourself, you want to play for the best team that's possible. Eleven, so kind of felt a bit demoted a bit and stuff like that um, but it, it really worked out for me in the end because I was if you know yourself getting game time is important even at that age yeah. getting game time is important and then um, yeah I was playing up front done very very well with the under 10s and then um, we agreed when we when the under 11s went to under 12s we agreed for me to stay at the under 10s permanently so I was now playing under 11s Saturday football like permanently which which was once you go to under 11s it's now 11 side used to yeah, be nine yeah. side when you're under 10 so I stay there permanently now um, and then um, yeah I just walked my way up was captain walked my way up all the through the age groups and then the manager that was um, my manager at the under 11s his name was Keith Kenner 
he left and then he was like a f- proper father figure to me like because obviously um at that time it was the space in the space of a year my father wasn't around anymore my dad wasn't around anymore so he kind of like he looked at looked after me a lot and back in them times my my mum didn't drive so yeah. he picked me up for, he picked me up for every session dropped me back for every session whenever I had DDSL trials he picked me up for the DDSL trials dropped me back literally brought me everywhere everywhere I needed to go he he picked me up and bring me so he was a very very integral part of the where I am now because obviously if, if it was a case of where he thought oh sure he can't get left to train and then there's nothing you can really do yeah. you know what I mean? and I he could have just left to dry type of thing yeah yeah he could have left but he properly looked after me like I mean he looked after me properly literally brought me everywhere I needed to go with regards football and then so playing for Crumlin went down played in the Kennedy Cup we actually the, the first tournament you play at DDSL level is the Cashel Cup we won that Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, went to the Kennedy Cup, playing in the Kennedy Cup, very, very unbelievable experience at, at such a young age. Probably the best experience you'll get at that age. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, we were the first team to lose the Kennedy Cup in like six years for the DDSL. So that was very, very heartbreaking. And I was the captain of that team as well. So. <laughs> Who betches in that? In that uh... The NDSL. Oh, Shots no. had, <laughs> had to be direct rivals as well, didn't it? Oh, they they, must, we, have had, we they must have had a decent old squad, to be fair, though. N- not even, Jack. No? Not even, because they scored literally in the first five minutes and literally parked the Lewis. They parked <laughs> the Lewis, mate. They just camped <laughs> in. The most frustrating game I've ever seen. I'll, I'll never forget that game. I remember every single part of that game. They literally parked two double-decker boards. Buses. Mourinho wouldn't have a patch on that manager, man. Honestly, <laughs> uh, and then uh, so yeah, we, we were the first DDSL team to lose in like six, seven years or something like that. So it was very, very heartbreaking and stuff. Um, but yeah. yeah, played all played all the way up the age groups with Crumlin. Um, so who who would have been then, on that Crumlin team, Fud? That you played from with that Crumlin team. Um, Stephen Best, Jamie Hollywood, Aaron Robinson. Was he playing that team? I don't remember to know he wasn't. No. He was a year older. He oh, was a year older. older. Um, the Bracken twins, Paul Bracken and Andrew Bracken. Um, yeah. Jamie Hollywood, Stephen Best. Who else? Troy Carey. We actually had a very, 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 very good team as well. And we won yeah. the league as well. We won the DSL under 14s or under 15s. I'm not 100% sure, but it was a very competitive league. But Kevin's dominated, dominated more, more yeah. than enough. But we... we we managed to scrape a few league titles there, here and there. And then, yeah, so that manager that was looking after me when I was 11, he left and you know, I just felt like a big part of me left. And the new manager that came in, I just wasn't all right. Like, you get me? I wasn't like, I didn't feel the same vibe off him. I didn't like, um, you just kind of treat me a bit differently and stuff like that. And then, so at this point, this was at like under seven, under 16s. And so you're meant to go to under 17s. And I decided to go to, Deco Heavey, who was my coach at the DDSL at the Kennedy Cup, was then Rovers under 19s manager. Okay. So he kind of he rang me up and said, "Oh, what's the story? What are you doing? Blah blah blah. This do you want to come and play for Rovers under 19s?" Mm-hmm. And obviously at that age, I was a massive thing, like yeah. Um, and uh, which was the electricity air, 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 level, like underage level, and then um, I said, "Yeah," because obviously it kind of felt right to me because obviously that manager had left, and I knew Deco well, and this was a great opportunity to play. At a higher level, so I said yes, yeah. no problem. Went to signed for overs 19s, and um, again, it was kind of the same situation as with Crumlin. It was a very, very, very good team, very hard to break into it. So, we kind of came to another agreement at that time that I played for the over 17s because obviously I was still eligible. Yeah, um, but they this at this time the under 17 at Tristan League wasn't open yet, so that Rovers under 17 team was still DDSL. DDSL, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I played, played there. Played against Crumlin, played, uh, played against all my old teammates and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, played, don't know, done, done well. The team weren't great, but obviously at, at, at the same time, yeah. just to get match time and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. um, so at the end of that season, that my fourth season at Rovers 19s, um, Rovers made the B team. And then so all the 19s lads moved up to the B team and yeah. all the 17s lads moved up to the 19s. Mm-hmm. So um, I was able to get more game time out with the 19s at that time and stuff like that. We had a mm. very good 19s team, Richie Porty, Evan O'Sam, 
um, Keelan Kavanagh, um, Sean so Heaney. So, just sorry, sorry to call across you. So, see when you're at this point, yeah, and you're at Rovers, yeah, or even at Crum and wherever it may be in your teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a case for you that you were? Did you kind of know always that you wanted to make it professionally, or were you just playing it for enjoyment, or what was your scenario? Um, obviously, when you're that young, ten, eleven, you're just playing football to enjoy. You can mm-hmm. even play three yeah. ninety three matches because obviously you you just want to run around and play football mm-hmm. with your mates. Like that's what you yeah. thought at that time. But obviously, when you start reaching 12, 13 and you start seeing lads going away, you start seeing lads going on trial there. You start seeing lads going on trial here. It, it, it's a thing that starts. You start start thinking in your head that oh, I actually want to do this now. And uh, from when I was about 12, 13 after the Kennedy Cup, and when you go on trials, went on loads of trials and stuff like that. That's when you. That's when I really wanted to become a professional. Like and. Um, mm-hmm. It was a long winded journey because when lads were going away and I was I was still here, I was not like you were you were jealous. You just kind of like, oh, I want that too. Do you know what I mean? I want to be playing in England too and stuff like that. And it kind of drove me more. And then um, so that's when um, our Rovers 19s when that didn't work out, I went to Pats because obviously. Okay. Pats so how did that move Pats. come about then, Foot? Um, that move came about because my. One of my friends that played with the Pats coach gave me his number. The Pats coach was Richie Smith. Okay. So I rang Richie Smith. I rang Richie Smith. This was the first ever time that I, I, I rang a manager up directly, actually asking to play for a team to get me. Okay, it was yeah. usually managers would ring me up and say, did yeah. I want to come to their team and stuff like that. So uh, I had to grow quickly. And so I, I, I rang Richie up. I was like, oh, Richie, can I come? Uh, uh, what's the story? Can I come up on, on trial? He, he asked me how did I play for. I gave him my background and stuff like that, and he obviously done his due diligence. Said yeah, no problem. I come up on trial. Went on trial. Done really, really well. And um, signed for Pats. Um, this was the Pats team with the likes of Darmarkey, Jamie mm-hmm. McGrath, Jack Bailey, all them types of which we had a very, very, very good team. Uh, played for Pats for two two years at underage level. And uh, won the league, won the All Ireland, um, won the won a, won a good few trophies at Pats. And it was seventeen, eighteen, and at this age, that's when you start kind of like getting involved with the force team, having say, training sessions with the force team and stuff like that. Yeah. So and, we'll break um, we'll break it down a little bit. So you said yeah. you're play, playing at Pats. What was it like to win trophies there? You mentioned a few players. So playing alongside the likes of Darren Markey, Jamie McGrath players like that, and then obviously making your first team debut at Pats as well. So maybe just break it down a little bit like that first. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, that comp- competition as well, because there were players that were playing in my position. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, unbelievable players. We won the All-Ireland, and uh, we bet Derry 3-2 in the final. Jamie scored a winner. And um, even though I wasn't really involved that year in in playing every game, I didn't. I wasn't like a regular, regular. But I had snippets off the bench, played, had got some game time, but not as much as obviously I wanted. But mm-hmm. winning the league and winning the All Ireland, kind of like you forget about how much you didn't play. You just realize that oh, you are part of a team that actually won this. Mm-hmm. So that was good for me. And then um, making my first team debut. I made my first team debut on the last day of the 2016 season um, against Derry. Came on in the last half an hour and done very, very well. And um, so we went into the off season in that season. And um, I had a couple of options of because I was done at 19s then. So I had a couple of options to in the league. Our was one of them, and um, there was a couple of other clubs. But obviously, the most standout club was Bowes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a call from Keith Long. He had been watching me for a long, long time. And um, got a call from Keith Long because my cousin played there, Izzy. So Izzy kind of Izzy, told him yeah. that I was his cousin and stuff like that. So he thought that that, that was the direct relationship to kind of bring me to the club. Mm-hmm. With Pats, obviously, I loved my time at Pats. And then I was still keeping all options open and with Liam Buckley and stuff like that. And then... Um, but well, decided to sign for Bowes anyways, and um, the, that Bowes. So how yeah, so how did that move to Bowes come about? Been. Was it just a direct call from Keelong himself, or what way did it happen? 
Um, yeah, it was. I just, we, I was playing a college game on one, uh, one day, and um, just on the way home, and I got a call from from um, an un- obviously an unknown number at this time because I never had his number saved. And yeah. He said, uh, yeah. Um, just said, yeah. My name's Keith Long. Um, introduced himself, who he was, what he did. Said that he'd like me to come to Bowls. That he's he's scouted me a lot. He's watched me a lot. He's said good things about me as a person as well as a footballer and stuff like that. And he said that yeah that. Um, that Izzy's um, he just kind of used Izzy as a lure to kind of bring me to the club so he kind of yeah. sold the club that way because he knew that oh who wouldn't like to play at a team where you know somebody already and you're so close to somebody on the team already mm-hmm. especially somebody that's your family so yeah. uh, he kind of used that and um, yeah so that that was a very 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 big factor in me going to bowls like, like I said yeah. I had a, a very strong affinity to Pats and that that door was sure, uh, certainly wasn't closed. Like I still had the option of signing for Pats, but I just felt like with balls, there was a better opportunity to play um, games, get game time and stuff like that. And um, I just felt like it was the right move at the time. And obviously now that I look back at it, it was the best move possible at the time. And mm-hmm. um, so I signed for balls um, on an, on amateur forms, um, mm-hmm. obviously because when when you're so when you're 17 18 and it's and you're kind of like don't have any f- experience of first team football it's a, it's it's a gamble not a gamble but you don't really get put in pro forms at, at that age and when you have no yeah. experience of first team football so it's fun and amateur forms mm-hmm. um for me that wasn't a, a big issue if you're a professional or an amateur it was just the fact that i was playing for balls in the league of Ireland, and that was the big thing for me yeah um, and my time at balls at the start was so see you were at balls forward right okay yeah, and yeah. when when we obviously would have done that fast cars and stuff together, and yeah. we were training every day, I would have kind of thought Gio was more of a an attacking player and stuff, and I don't yeah. know creative kind of I don't know looking to make things happen. How do you go yeah. from playing kind of in an attacking kind of position to going from into a holding midfielder role? How did that happen for you? Yeah, I actually left that part out, but yeah, that was a <laughs> a bit that was a big turning point in actually the player I am now because, uh, like you said, when we were in the first course together, um, I always play, played as one of the advanced midfielders. So mm-hmm. if you're playing a three midfield, I was one of the two, the either the eight or the ten. Yeah, and um, I was, that was the same with Pats at under nineteen level, and um, and my fourth season, and then the second season. Um, we had new managers. New, new managers came in, and um, we were playing a friendly against Rada. And one of the, the defensive midfielders I was meant to play that day got injured in the warm up. And so the manager said, "Look, um, I'm going to need somebody to do a job there for me." And we said, "I just said to the contact, will you, will you do a job there for me?" I said, "Yeah, no bother." Played there and. Like, had an absolute game of my life, mate. Like, honestly, and then um, yeah. Liam Buckley and uh, Dave Campbell were there, who were the fourth team, the fourth team manager and the head of recruitment for the for the Pats fourth team. Yeah. And they just came to me. They just came to me after the game. And said that's the best I've ever seen you. Like, honestly, I was like, like I was so, so shocked. Was that, was that, that a well. case of like a, a turning point for you? Then was it just because you had an outstanding game? You're like, here, I think I might give this a crack, or what was it? Literally. That game, my under 19 manager said, There's no chance you're playing in one of the advanced midfield positions again. There's absolutely no chance. And obviously, like I said, the forcey manager was there, so he obviously seen me as that player in that position then. So there's no way I could have played there for the 19s because once the forcey manager sees you in a certain position, you're going to play there for, uh, for, for the 19s because obviously, when you move up to the forcey, that's the position they want you to play in. Mm-hmm. So ever since it was that, that was the big turning point for me. Played there, played the six, played there for a year. Um, at Pat's, um, which was obviously my second year, so I was one of the older lads at the club at the, at, on the team now. So there was 17, 18 year old, 16, 17 year olds coming through, and I was 18. So just my last year at 19, I was um, it just kind of like brought my game to another level, just brought my game to another level in, um, in the sense that I was able to express myself more, I was able to get the ball off the centre halves and kind of like dictate the tempo of the game and stuff like that, which Liam obviously liked because he's a possession pay, he's a mm-hmm. possession based manager. Yeah. So yeah, brought my game to another level that year and then um, was done very very well. And 
that was the year I made my debut. And then ever since then, I've just been playing in that position, and I'm playing yeah. in that position now. Like, and I don't so, think I'm going to be. So your first kind of season in senior football, as you could say, for it, okay? It feels like I'm saying again. And how influential was Keith Long and Trevor Crowley in your for your first season that Ball was playing in that position? Um, like life, not like maybe life changing is an exaggeration, but. At the same time, it they did change my life in the sense that they actually taught me values off football, off the football pitch as well, as well as on the pitch. Mm-hmm. And um, anybody, anybody that was in that Bowles dressing room in 2006, in the 2017 season, definitely didn't think that how it started that year would have was how it was going to pan out and how mm-hmm. it ended the year. Because um, at the start of that year. The first maybe two, three months of my time at Bowls, I was literally ready to quit football, ready to leave, ready to like stop. I said, because like, obviously I couldn't deal with the pressures of playing for three points, which is at the end of uh, on a Friday night, which is people's livelihoods, people's do you know I mean? fans yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't deal with it in the sense that at that time I had a lot of pressure on me with stuff external to football, with college and exams and, and college football as well because obviously at that time I was in the new time they were sponsoring me and uh, my scholarship so there was no oh I have a match on Friday night I can't play on Thursday yeah it, it wasn't like that Co- college football was kind of put at the same level as that because like I said they were they were um paying for my scholarship and stuff like that so had a tough time very 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 difficult time had a few t- two or three run-ins with the two of them as well at the start like and it, it it just showed how ruthless first team football is because it was it was such a cultural shock. Like I, yeah. some of the stuff that was said, the, some of the stuff that was did, it was literally like I was just thinking like, yeah, this isn't for me. I'm I'm, I'm gonna pack it in and it's just gonna stop. And then um, but the, the the thing at the end of the day is that even though they kind of used the iron fist on me, they never gave up on me. They kind of still said to me at the end of the day, regardless of how they felt towards me after a training, specific training session or after a specific game, they kind of still said, look, we know the ability you have. We've watched you many, many times. You just don't become a bad player overnight. Yeah. Uh, maybe, it's just a, maybe it's just a thing where there's a lot of pressure on you at the moment. So they kind of just took a back seat and just said, look, do you know what you, you, you're going to have to do is just start enjoying your football again. Start working hard and training and stuff like that. Because at this time, my head was completely gone. Like, like honestly, it was out the window. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of gave me confidence uh, um, from that point of view, and just kind of said, "Look, just just um, go back to the basics and strip everything back, and don't think too much about things, and 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 then you, you'll come good." And then uh, it it happened, and I, I made my debut against um, Cabin Teeley in the EA Sports Cup, which was a game where players that haven't been playing on the Friday yeah, fringe players, their game yeah. from that way, fringe players and stuff like that. Played in that position and again had an absolute worldy of a game. And um, Keith just kind of said to me after the game, and he goes, "You kind of just said, look, I knew you could do it. I, I always believed in you, even though I was tough with you at the start and stuff like that." And um, boy, just kind of showed you. I just you just showed me there that you are able for this and you are able to be a part of this club and play at this level and stuff like that. So made my debut on the Tuesday night against Calipelli and made my, my league debut on the Friday. Uh, against Sligo, which was a, even though I I know I did well on the Tuesday, didn't think I'd go straight into the starting eleven on the yeah. on a Friday night. My debut when Keith was calling my name, it was just a huge shock. But everybody was kind of buzzing for me uh, because everybody knew what I'd gone through to get to that point and stuff like that. Um, so I'd done well against Sligo again, and just it just snowballed from there and just got better and better every game. Yeah, and the big the bigger the game, the better I got and stuff like that. And, I started to forge an unbelievable relationship with Keith and Trevor um, because I think now at that, when I was doing well, they kind of respected me more because it was easy for me to, like I said, pack it in and say, I'm done and yeah. I'm, I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to be a part of it anymore because at this time, you're not even getting life-changing money anyway. So you're just like, Do you know yeah. what, I'm not even... I'm, you, show, you show great character there and I, I suppose just, they like that. I'm not playing uh, on a Friday. Yeah, that's why... Our relationship kind of went to the next level because they respected me more and they kind of knew that oh yeah you know he has a bit of character about him and he has a bit about him like do you get me and uh, um 
so as like I said, as the season went on, it just got yeah. better and better as the season went on. And um, you, I suppose you became a, a fan July. favorite then in Daily um, Mount as well, didn't you? What do you think that was? Like, you kind of broke up. Did I break up? I said you were you kind of you were a fan you were a fan favorite yeah. in Daily Mount. What do you think that was down to? Um, I think it was just down to the fact that I just gave tried to give my all every game, tried to give a hundred percent every game, um, because uh, the bare minimum you can give is work ethic and yeah. effort and endeavor and and uh, and industry like Jamie. You know so I just felt like I, if once I could do that every game, at least I'm I'm doing the bare minimum. Do you get me? And then whatever happens after that, how I play after that. Is a bonus, and um, mm. I think that's what Keith kind of really liked about me and stuff like that. It's just that I just worked, gave 100% every game, nothing less. And um, I think that's what that the fans probably seen that yeah, that he's committed to the cause, he's committed to the club, he, he works mm. his socks off every game. So that's probably why that was the case. But um, yeah, I just built an unbelievable relationship relationship with the fans and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it was just an unbelievable season from where it started yeah. and how it ended. It's just unbelievable. And then, um, like I said, you could you couldn't really ask for a better four season of senior football, really, could you? Honestly, like it was just it was the difference between the first three months and the last, let's say, six or seven months was night and day. Like mm-hmm. um, from going and winning the player in the month in July, and then I. Um, my move to England falling through in August, which is obviously a bit of a setback, but mm-hmm. um, that, like that's how mad football is. Because three minute, three months prior to that, I was ready to give up. I was ready to quit. So, yeah. in like so, August, July, June, May, I was ready to quit in April. Yeah. So three months after, it just shows how mad football is. It's just the maddest game on earth. Like so, yeah. It just and in that. When that scenario happened, it just kind of reinforced the idea that yeah, you just can't keep, give up until like the fat lady sings. Really, you just cannot yeah. give up. Whatever happens, like you just have to take it. It just you just have to grow up, really, and just know that football is a game where there's going to be ups and downs every single time, and you just can't get too high when it's up, and you can't get too low when it's down. You just have to kind of keep a medium key and just take the bad with the good, and take the good with the bad, and just kind of try your best and. Once you give your hundred percent all and your best, and it doesn't work out, well, at least you know you have more risk. But yeah, and then ending the year, winning the Player of the Year was was obviously a big shock for me as well, and it just went to show you the difference that season made for me as a person as well as as a footballer. I kind of realised what it's like to be in a dressing room where there's three points on the line every Friday night. People's livelihoods are at stake. People's mm-hmm. fans are when you're not winning. Fans are known. I think that just kind of gave me the boot up the bum that I needed. And yeah, yeah. So, so, the, I, so I that was, like, that was obviously a, a great season you had with balls and in, uh, in senior football well, as your four season. So, when that season finishes and you have an absolute class season, um, were you kind of thinking then? Before obviously that move the Barna came about, were you thinking that England was that step of the ladder that you wanted to go to, or what? What was going through your mind after that great season at Bowles originally? Um, prior to signing for Bowles, I literally in my head what I wanted to do was just play, try and get at least ten games in. That's what my tag was: get 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 ten starts in, and and you're flying and. Because mm-hmm. obviously, you're, when you're a young player in the league of in the league of Ireland and you're playing week in week out, there's going to be eyes on you and stuff like that. But my plan initially was to get ten games in, and obviously that more than tripled. So it was England was always on my mind because, like I said, when I was twelve, thirteen, and seeing all the lads going away and stuff like that, that was still on my mind. I always wanted to play in England and stuff like that. But looking back at it now. It was probably the wrong decision to mm-hmm. leave after that first year balls, um, because, like I, like you said, it was just my first. It was my fourth season at senior senior level. Like, do you get me? It wasn't mm-hmm. like I was a seasoned League of Ireland player. I had a huge amount of appearances under my belt for such a young lad. But it was definitely 
rushed and it was definitely probably the wrong decision because I felt like maybe another two, three years at Bowles playing week in, week yeah, would have done me the world of good and then you probably would have got a bigger, a bigger a better move than what I did get. Yeah. But it was one of them as well where I felt like that the opportunity came and you just can't let opportunities like that go because if you don't get another opportunity like that again, you'll be kicking yourself and you'll be like, yeah. why didn't I just go and then at least give it a shot? which is what I did. I, at least I gave it a shot. And obviously yeah. it didn't work out and that's fine. Things don't work out in life and things don't work out in football. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't have any regrets. You just kind of think of, oh, think of it as a learning process and how you would have probably done things differently if, if the occasion was to happen again. But I definitely yeah. don't have, don't regret going to England because like, that's yeah. like every kid's dream. Mm-hmm. But, how how yeah, actually difficult was it for you though um, for going over there? Like in terms of the standard, or why do you think it didn't work out for you? Um, so people, players always say this. I think you need a bit of luck in football as well. I just don't think I had any luck at all in England. Um, believe it or not, I had six managers in the space of six months. Yeah, that doesn't six help. Six different managers in the space of six months, which is which is absolutely bonkers and unheard of, like, because mm-hmm. while you're training well and you're pressing the new manager, he gets the second, a new manager comes in who has his preferences, has the players that he knows already, players he wants to bring in. So you just literally, the, as you get up the ladder, you just get knocked back down to the bottom. And then um, that and injuries didn't really do me the world of good either as well, because I broke my foot while I was over there. Okay. And, um, Did that I, happen in training or a game? or how it came back 20... Yeah, I broke my foot again in the friendly against MK Dons. It was kind of a in-house game. Um, I was actually doing well that game, and it was a game where the new manager at the time, which was Martin Allen, was watching fringe players at the time to see who was, who was going to complete the first-team squad at the time. And like I said, I was doing well that game, and it was just unfortunate that I went up for a header, landed, and just foot just broke in half. Like, so... It was unfortunate, but I, I, I never like read into things like that and be like down over it because I just think everything happens for a reason and probably yeah. the reason was for me not to be involved at that time so I can leave Barney. So um, it, it, it was just one of them things. And like I said, I have no regrets. Um, it was a great experience in the sense you, you've seen how things was done at a professional level club in England and, and made friends for life and made... Obviously, so many of them got, the lads that were over there I still talked on a daily basis or on a nearly daily basis. So it was a good experience from that point of view. But at the end of the day, regardless of how many friends you have or how many mates you make in the dressing room, the key is playing football and playing mm-hmm. weekly. Week. Yeah, and I wasn't getting that. And I wasn't doing that. So I just felt like I had to leave and, and that's what yeah. happened. And um, So how, how, uh, how did the I, long I, move to Larna come about yeah, then? I'm, I'm going to go on loan and... Um, it came about because obviously, like, like I said, um, I wasn't getting game time in England, and um, there's a lot of things that happen behind the door, behind the scenes that nobody nobody will see. That you get me? That they'll only see that yeah, it didn't work out. He's gone to land. That's it. But obviously, there's loads of reasons behind why it didn't work out. That that it's kind of like too too deep to talk about on 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 stuff like this. But um, so, anyways. The, the main re- game time, so that's that's obvious. Um, I was actually meant to go back on loan at Bowes, but I just kind of get, I kind of got, I, I got a bit screwed over by the manager that was there at the time. Uh, I got lied to. It's, it's so it's so ruthless in England, like it's way yeah. way more ruthless. So um, I got lied to, I got deceived and stuff like that, and and I, the, the move to Bowes wasn't able to happen anymore. And then so. I had to go somewhere. I had to go somewhere and then the only club that was, because obviously prior to that, I hadn't played football for a good six months. So it was hard for my agent to sell the club that, look, I have this player here to go on loan. And when you haven't played for six months, you get me. So mm-hmm. the only team at the time that was available was were, were teams up in Northern Ireland. Then when, I'm, uh, when my agent, when the land manager got in contact with my agent and he kind of sold the club to my agent, and my, he rang me and said, um, this is what this club is offering. And at the time, they were in the championship in Northern Ireland. And obviously, uh, yeah, you drop down levels, you just feel like, oh, here we go again. I'm going back. I'm taking a backward step. 
and naturally that's what any footballer will feel like but um, I, I wasn't all for the move at the start I didn't really want to go there I wasn't really I wasn't really keen but I just kind of put the big I put the the, I kind of put the big, bigger picture ahead and just felt like, look, you just have to go and play games regardless of what it is. Just go and play games and get 90 minutes under your belt every week and just assess, reassess it in January. And that's what I did. Um, when I went there and playing in the championship, obviously the standard isn't great and stuff like that. It's not the highest standard. Like, don't get me wrong, there's good players there and there's good teams there, but obviously the league as a whole wasn't a great standard. And um, uh I remember that period and people. I just when I it got announced I signed alone. I got my phone box was absolutely hot and saying, "How could you go there? How like why are you taking a step backwards? How like you're way better than that and stuff like that." I just and and I, I know then people are kind of like knew that I, I would I could do better than what the level I was at now. But it's easy to let to use that. It's easy to let that get to you. And be like, oh, are these people actually right? And um, I shouldn't be playing here and stuff like that. But that Lion team, when I first went over there and, and trained, it was a massive, massive, massive shock. The standard of the players that were there and the standard of the training was, honestly, I've never been so shocked in my life. Like, in my head, what, what I thought was going to be was the complete opposite. The professionalism, the the commitment, the the quality of players, the it, was, it just blew my mind. Like, I was just so shocked. But obviously... The league wasn't great, but our team was very, very, very good. Like so, I just kind of seen as at least I'm training with better players. I'm training with very, very good players every day, and we just kind of put, put our heads down and try and get out of this league as, as quick as we can, and then play in the Premiership next year. And then that's what happened. And then in the January of that year, I signed permanently um, due to the fact that I've, I've I've seen what happened the six months prior to that, and I've seen the direction the club wanted to go, and I've seen the quality of the players that were there, and I've seen the the hunger and the drive that from the owner and stuff like that so I just felt like that was the best move for me at that time and um, and obviously there's there's things that were feasible that only Barnett could do you get me only mm -hmm. not yeah. not necessarily afford but only Barnett would accept because obviously at the end of the day I was still a Barnett player and for me to go there permanently it has to be negotiated between the two clubs so mm -hmm. the 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 offers that Barnett were putting out there weren't feasible for any other club except for Lan. So, um, so Lan, and yeah, it, and I'm very grateful for that because they could have they could have said, nah, do you know what? You've done your job for us the past six months. You basically won us. We we basically had the league wrapped up in January, anyways. Yeah. So they could have easily said, do you know what? We 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 we've got what we wanted out of you. We nearly won the league. You can just go back and stuff like that. But. They kind of seen the bigger picture and they wanted me to be a part of their future and be a part of their project and stuff like that. And obviously, I'm very grateful for that. And then, so yeah, ever since then, I've just been up in Northern Ireland living the life up. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, you're you're playing um, in the top the top division up there now. How um how much have you been enjoying your football? Um, obviously before all the virus and stuff. And how how do you rate the league now that you're currently playing it? Um. The league that we're playing in now is a very competitive league, very, very big clubs in that league. And, um, like, again, I in relation to the League of Ireland, if you want me to compare it to that, in, in that point of view, in relation to the Premier Division of the League of Ireland, I would say the Premier Division of the League of Ireland is, is a bit better. There's, there's a better depth of teams. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the teams up north would give any League of Ireland club a game on their day because I've seen... I've played against them teams and I've played against League of Ireland teams and stuff like that, even though that was about two, three years ago. But they, and at the same time, it is a competitive league, but probably not as competitive as the League of Ireland. But, um, yeah, I was really doing well this season and um, the team was doing well as well. We were in great run of form. We were, I think, 10 games unbeaten before the virus um, um, put a halt to things. And then... Um, um, there was a, there was a period in in February where we were going through a rough patch and we weren't getting a lot of points and we were drawing games and losing games and um, Lyon have a have a have a, a thing where they haven't beat the Belfast Big Two, which is Linfield and, and Torren in like okay. something like sixty years or something like that. Yeah. And we bet the two of them back to back. We bet them on the we bet Clint Torren on the Saturday. And we bet Linfield on the Tuesday. 
And that was a massive, massive confidence boost. And we just went on a huge run. And ever since then, we just haven't lost a game. And the last game we played um, prior to prior to the coronavirus halt and things was in the Cup against Coleraine. And we, we actually, sorry, I told the lie that we actually lost that game. We, we uh, got knocked out of quarterfinals, but undeservedly so. Like, but um, yeah, we won a great, great, great vein of form. And um, I felt like with the way we see we were playing and the way the scholars the limit. Good stuff. Um, you've been deadly with your time so far. Uh, so I'm just gonna ask a few more questions and then wrap it up. All right. Yeah. Right. So, best player you've played with and against. Um. Jesus, you have to catch me on guard with that one. <laughs> uh, best player I've ever played with. Oh, that's a tough one. I would say Jeff Hughes. Here and um, he's the club captain. And he's had an unbelievable career in England. For best player that, because he, he plays him. We play in the same position. So, the best player that I've. I would go him for, okay. for the things of, of his experience and stuff like that. He's just a different level. Uh, best player I've ever played against. There's a good few. Um, Patrick McElhenney was very good when I played against him. When I played against him, that was, a se- that was the year he was having the season of his life. Yeah. Um, so he was very, very good. Um, who else is good that year? Um, Graham Book was good as well. Very good player. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can't say any players from England anyways because yeah. I, I barely we, played we, against we any. believe it was Patrick <laughs> McElhenney maybe because he was the first yeah, one yeah. offhand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, so um, we'll go with um, best manager you've played under them. Keith Long. Definitely. No, no hesitation there, what? <laughs> no, hundred percent, definitely. And w- why would you say that is? Just kind of has the intensity to get the best out players, or yeah, that's why that's why it works so well at balls. They, they just come. Keith and Trevor complement each other very well. Keith is unbelievable with managing players and managing personalities and the human side of things. You get me. And Trevor's just an unbelievable coach on the training ground. Mm-hmm. So um, they really, really complement each other that way and. Uh, Keith is just, it's just Keith's man management skills and how he managed my situation when I was going through a very very difficult period. Uh, how he managed that situation is going to like stick with me for the rest of my life because it was very easy for managers to give up on you and and and, and push it to the side and 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 leave you out on the wind. Like, but he he yeah. he he still, regardless of how tough he was with me, he he still stayed loyal to me and he still stayed like he still believed in me so that was a very very massive moment for me like and that's why he's the best manager I've ever played on so far deadly quality and um, last question then right so if I was running a five side tournament tomorrow pick your five on your team that you've played with or even against as well um jeez you can pick Defender. a goalkeeper and four outfielders, or you can just go with five outfielders. Up to you. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go goalkeeper. Goalkeeper subs. Shane Supple. At the at the back, the man, the legend, Derek Pender, definitely, one hundred percent. Midfield, Jeff Hughes. Um, so that's what's that? Three players. That's three. So you have so two I, more, yeah. So I, so I have two left. Patrick McElhenney and up front. Did he cock or red? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Stick the man who grabs the goals, huh? Hey, <laughs> absolute fox to the box him. <laughs> Uh, they'll be happy with that. Um, quality, right, that's it. Um, thanks for your time. And uh, let's hope you are back on the pitch down what you do best. And uh, I 
I'll speak to you soon, all right? Top man, Jacko. Fair play to you, mate. Take it easy. Cheers, fella. All Good the luck. best, lad. Bye.